Sorry. Um, do you mind if I sit here? Thanks. What's that? Oh, yeah. Um, just here for a bit of peace and quiet while I work. interesting. Just a little bit of writing. This little story I've had in my head for a while. Just a bit of fun. Yeah, you know, quite spaces where you can come to write are in shorter and shorter supply. I used to like working out of a coffee shop, but it just keeps getting busier and now I find it too much of a distraction. Um, <laughs> don't tell anybody, but I'm not actually a member. I just never got around to registering, and uh, I don't take books out. I just come here to use the desks and the internet. I should probably register at some point. It's not like it costs money, but still. It's just something I keep procrastinating on, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Don't let me distract you anymore. <laughs> sorry, I... I hope I'm not breaking your train of thought or anything, but you look like you're in a bit of a bind. Yeah, I mean, you've got a kind of panicked look on your face. Like, you don't know what you're doing and there's a deadline looming or something like that. <laughs> See, I knew it'd be something like that. What's the deadline? Oh, okay. Well, you know, that's not too bad. How much do you have to do? <laughs> well, it might seem like it will be really hard, but you just need to get yourself into the flow, right? Yeah, flow. Flow state. You know, when you're really focused on something and the words or the art or the PC building or whatever it is you're doing, Seems to come effortlessly, without you having to think about it. Yeah, that's the one. I think if you're working to a deadline like this, it can be a bit harder, because instead of letting your mind relax and focus on the actual thing you have to do, all you're thinking about is the deadline. And that's no good, it breaks your focus. Right. So, try and stop thinking about it for a little bit. Just a little bit. If you stop thinking about it for 10 or 15 minutes, that really isn't going to affect your ability to get it done, at least not in a negative way. If the deadline is 24 hours from now, 15 minutes is almost nothing, right? It's... No, hold on, let me do the maths. It's 1 96th of that time, which is almost none of it, right? So... Don't freak out. Try and clear your mind. Take a breath. Take a break. Think about something else. If you're panicked about the deadline, there's no way you'll be able to enter flow state. And don't get me wrong, sometimes a little pressure can actually be quite helpful. If you know it's there, if you acknowledge it and respect it. But don't think about it constantly. Then, for sure, knowing you have to get something done quick can be helpful. But I can tell it's not the state you were in. The big, wide, deer-in-the-headlights eyes gave it away. <laughs> hmm. I've been there plenty of times myself. Oh, no, not with school. Well, not for a long, long time. I've been out of education for a bit. Didn't do college or anything like that. No, I'm a writer. I do freelance copywriting for non-fiction books. It can be pretty dry, or really interesting, depending on the subject. <laughs> but the deadlines, they can be killer if you let them be. Every now and then I'll forget my own advice and think about the deadline way too much. <sighs> you know, we probably shouldn't be talking so much in a library. I think we've been getting a few looks. Why don't we go outside for a bit? Yeah, come on. 
In this state of mind, I promise you, you're not going to get much done. You need a quick break to clear your mind and calm down. And in the time it'll take you to do that, I guarantee you won't have got anything done, so you're not going to be wasting it. You'll more than make up for it when you come back to the work, refreshed and in the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. Pack up your stuff. It won't take long. We're just going to take a breather. <sighs> the fresh air alone often helps clear my mind, you know. And a change of scenery. How long had you been sitting in there? Three hours. And, well, it looked like you'd gotten almost nothing done in that time. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, I'm sorry. But, you know, that just proves to me that you needed a little time out. If you got that much done in three hours, you definitely weren't going to suddenly get a burst of motivation and get loads done in these 15 minutes. Oh, me? No. Don't worry about me. I'm not on a deadline today. I just came here because I like the ambience. I got all the time in the world right now. It's a blessing. Yeah, I'm taking advantage of it while I can. Next week I've got three separate clients booked in for pitch meetings. It's going to be bloody hell. But I'm not thinking about that right now. It's not relevant to the moment. I've already done all the prep I can, so... Hey, you want some tea? Yeah, I carry a little thermos around. Some days I treat myself to something from a cafe, but it'd get real expensive if I did that every day. I get bankrupt. So most of the time I brew at home and bring it out. Yeah, sure. I have a spare cup that I put water in sometimes. You can use that. There you go. It's decaf, by the way. So... Don't worry about getting the jitters. That's probably the last thing you need when you're already nervous about a deadline. <laughs> I go through phases where I feel like I'm powered exclusively by caffeine. It's probably not too good for you to be like that, but I just fucking love tea and coffee, so I keep slipping back into it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird that we so openly talk about caffeine like that. When, if I just swapped out the word caffeine for some other drug and left the rest of it as is, it would sound horrific, right? But whatever. Tea good. Coffee good. Oh. Tea lukewarm. I should get a new thermos. I only brewed this a couple hours ago. Oh well. I hope you like it well enough anyway. Nope. Nuh-uh. Shh. We're not going to talk about your work for a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, did that seem pushy? But I think maybe I should be. If you aren't used to building the habit, it takes a while to work out how to get unwanted thoughts out of your head. Right now, we're not thinking about work. So, let's think about something else. How? Well, there are a few ways I like to use. Sometimes, if I'm not too caught up on things... I can just kind of do it, you know, force myself to change my train of thought without much effort and then follow whatever rabbit hole my brain opens up. <laughs> it's handy to be able to do that, but if I'm too worked up, and I suspect that's where you are now, then the key is to get out of your head and employ as many of your other senses as you can. Yeah, a therapist would probably call it mindfulness. I guess that's a good enough word, though it's odd to me that it has the word mind in it when it's all about getting out of your mind. I don't want my mind to be full, I almost want it to be empty. Mind emptiness would be better, but then I'm not really qualified to judge it, so maybe I just don't understand what it is. Mm. Anyway, yes, all your senses. Being outside is really good for this, because there are so many more things to focus on. If you're inside, there's probably like one main smell, one main thing you can see, and it probably isn't changing all that much. But outside, it smells of a whole bunch of things, and there are always new sounds happening. People watching is brilliant for this too, and there are plenty of people around here. 
Yeah. You never did that? I mean, you must have done it casually. I think humans are naturally inclined to watch other humans. But maybe you didn't realize that's what you were doing. So, if I need to clear my mind and stop obsessively thinking about something that I don't want to be thinking about, I'll go outside, like we are now, and have a look around. Pick some person at random and let the thoughts flow. Sometimes, you might find yourself thinking something a little judgmental. That's actually a good way to take stock of your own state of mind and work on yourself a bit. Any little prejudices you might not realize you held. If the first thing you think when you look at a random stranger is something negative, perhaps there's something to work on there. And there you immediately have quite an involving thought, something deep and meaningful to distract you from whatever it is you need a distraction from. Yeah, like, it's not all about, oh, that person over there has a red top, that person there has an unusual haircut, that person smelled really good, even though they might have done. The best kind of people watching, I think, goes a lot deeper than that. No, it doesn't all have to be super introspective like that thing I said about judgmental thoughts. I was just kind of spitballing. One thing that it's really fun to do is to see if you can get into someone's head a bit, figure out what they might be thinking and feeling. Mm. Unless you have a reason to talk to them, you might not ever find out if your guesses were right. But if you can get over that, it can be a lot of fun. And a chance to work on the skill of empathy which is a skill that you can work on, by the way. It's a good one, because you can do it any time you want, as long as there are people around. Okay, so, like, let's see. There's someone sitting on a bench over there having a sandwich. I wonder what the sandwich is. I can't see the filling from here. Good-looking bread, though. Seeded. I love seeded bread. That heterogeneous texture is like... Mmm, it's good. But they're looking a little thoughtful, huh? Like, unless it's a really good sandwich, it probably doesn't call for them to be in that deeper level of thought. So I wonder what they're thinking about. What do you think? Check their eyes, the creases at the corners. Yeah, they're kind of happy looking, right? So you could take a wild stab in the dark and say that they're thinking about something happy. I wonder if it's something good that's already happened and they're thinking of a memory or if they're anticipating something good. Oh, that's the best part about this. There isn't really a right answer. It can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't matter to you, and we're never going to find out, so it doesn't matter if you're wrong. There are no consequences to guessing here and letting your imagination run wild. Maybe they're anticipating the next bite of their sandwich. Though, like I said, maybe they look a bit too blissed out for that. Maybe they're gonna get a new pet soon, or something like that. Or perhaps they are simply blessed with a naturally happy and carefree disposition. Some people, if you can believe it, default to happy. They don't have to try. They don't have to do stuff like what we're doing now in order not to be plagued by unwanted thoughts. But hey-ho, everybody's different. Maybe they have their own annoying problems. So, anyway, I've talked enough. It's your turn. Have a look around and tell me what you see. And by the way, you can still do this even if you're stuck inside for whatever reason. You just have to imagine a person instead of actually seeing them. <laughs> it's a little harder, but not that hard. You'll get it. But for now, you're on easy mode. Have a look around. Okay, yep. Yeah. Someone feeding the birds. That's a good one. Don't see that too often anymore. People seem to really have it in for pigeons. What do you reckon's going on with them, then? Yeah, just take a look at their face. Study it. Don't worry, they probably won't notice. And if they do, just be, like, zoned out. They'll assume you're daydreaming. Hmm, kind of stern expression on their face, huh? You might think that somebody feeding the birds would be doing it because they find it fun, and so they'd be happy when they were doing it. But they don't look that happy. So, what's up with that? Yeah, maybe they're just not the sort of person to show happiness on their face that much. Could be. There are plenty of people like that. I like to go a little more speculative with my people watching, though. 
Um, well, maybe they don't look happy because they're not that happy. Maybe they feed the birds every day and they're doing it today out of habit, but they've got something big on their mind, so it's not bringing them all that much joy. But they're still doing it, though, because of the habit. <laughs> now you see, that's the trick. This is all nonsense. I'm not saying anything really meaningful. These wild guesses don't achieve anything, and they're probably totally wrong. But, hey, you know what you're not thinking about right now? <laughs> exactly. It worked, right? It's not that hard to take your mind off things when you need to. You just need to put in a tiny bit of effort to actually do it. Then once you're distracted, it becomes easy. So, now you aren't trapped at the bottom of a big spiral of overthinking. What do you reckon you want to do? Go back in there and get back to work, right? Well, first, before you do that, just spend a minute or two to gather your thoughts. Now your brain isn't so busy and you can think more clearly, it should be much easier to think about things one step at a time and actually get some meaning out of your thoughts. So, step one. What's step one? Okay, good. And step two? You don't need to think about it too much. It's just good to know where you're going next, so that while you're doing step one, you know you're going in the right direction. All right, that makes a lot of sense. So now you can go back in there and get started on that first step, knowing you've got a nice clear mind and plenty of headspace to work with. Oh, who am I? <laughs> don't worry about that. We'll see each other again if we need to. And if we don't, it's because you've got everything all under control. Now, you turn around and get back in there and get that thing done. I know you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs>